Hello. We cover in this segment some of the simpler image compression techniques. Although on their own they do not achieve competitive results as compared to the state-of-the-art algorithms and standards such as JPEG, on one hand they demonstrate means of achieving compression, but they're also typically parts of other compression schemes. We will spend a bit more time on predictive coding and more specifically with the so-called DPCM, Differential Pulse Code Modulation. We talked about prediction last week. In that case, however, the prediction error was encoded error-free or losslessly, while now it's first quantized and then entropy encoded. We will also look at the details of how to obtain the prediction coefficients when linear prediction is performed. We will derive the so-called normal equations that relate the prediction coefficients to values of the autocorrelation function of the image, a concept that we introduced when we talked about winner filtering. So let's proceed with this material. Subsampling can be considered as a compression technique, by itself is not competitive for example, when compared to transform-based techniques such as JPEG that we will be covering later this week. It is, however, an intermediate step in compression standards, also useful for achieving uh, spatial scalability. The idea is rather straightforward. An image is subsampled by a factor of two in each dimension, as shown here. Now, we covered subsampling or decimation earlier in the course, we know that in order to avoid aliasing, the image should first be low-pass filtered. No low-pass filter was applied in this particular example. So in this case, if the original image is m by n, the resulting image here is m over 2 by n over 2, therefore a 4 to 1 compression ratio is achieved. There are various ways to perform upsampling since we want to visualize the image at the original resolution. The simplest possible one is zero order hold or pixel duplication. Using this, we obtain the image shown here. We perform the same experiment with a factor of four in each dimension. And here is the result. In this case, the compression ratio is 16 to one. After zero order hold up sampling, we obtain this image. Clearly, annoying blotting artifacts are present in this case. PCM, or pulse code modulation, is a method to digitally represent sampled analog signals. Here it's used in requantizing the intensity values of an image. So, for this image, if we apply a one bit per pixel uniform quantizer, here is the result we obtain. This is actually a result that I showed um, earlier in the course during this week. Now, at low rates, in order to make the compression artifacts less objectionable, uniform noise is added to the data before the uniform quantization. And this is referred to as dithering. So this is the result of this one bit uniform quantizer after noise was added to the image. Now, since the noise is deterministic, that is, it was added by us intentionally, and therefore it's known, it can be subtracted after PCM, and here is the resulting image. The resulting image is multi-level, not bi-level as this one-bit image, and therefore gives a more pleasing appearance, an appearance closer in some sense to the original image. We talked about predictive coding last week when we covered lossless compression. We revisit the topic here under the historical name of differential pulse code modulation, DPCM. The guiding principles behind predictive coding and DPCM have as following. Most useful signals are highly predictable, which means we can estimate future values of the signal from past values, and this past can be spatial past values or spatial temporal past values. This is possible because the data are correlated. 
and therefore this predictability and more specifically the linear predictability we will be discussing here has to do something with the autocorrelation of the signal something that we covered earlier in the course for example when we covered winner filtering the basic principle of DPCM or predictive coding is that anything that can be predicted from past values can be done so both at the encoder and decoder and therefore what we need to send to the decoder is the unpredictable part of the signal which is just the prediction error as we will see the prediction coefficient denoted by a will be the result of the solution of this set of equations so-called normal equations that relate autocorrelation values again to the linear prediction coefficients so let's see the structure of the predictor and encoder decoder and also derive these so-called normal equations we show here the block diagram of a dpcm encoder x of n is the signal to be encoded is shown here as a one-dimensional signal x hat of n is the predicted value of the signal at the same time instance or at the same spatial location the prediction is performed by the predictor here that will utilize past values of the signal that are stored in memory if we subtract the prediction from the actual value of the signal we obtain here the prediction error if this were a lossless compression scheme we would send this prediction error to the decoder after entropy encoding since we're talking here about lossy compression this prediction error is quantized using a scalar or a vector quantizer and delta x prime of n therefore is the quantized prediction error this quantized prediction error is added to the prediction and their sum forms the reconstructed value of the signal so these past reconstructed values will be stored in memory to be used by the predictor to obtain the future predicted values of the signal an interesting question here of course is why should we use the reconstructed values of the signal in carrying out the prediction and not the original values of the signal which are clearly available at the encoder the reason for doing so is that we want both encoder and decoder to operate on the same data in carrying out the prediction the decoder clearly does not have the original data available but does have the reconstructed signal available if this were not the case like encoder decoder carrying out prediction operating on different amounts of data different types of data original versus reconstructed then we would have the so-called error drift so we see here that the decoder is part of the encoder actually the decoder is this part down here and this is the case in all predictive encoding schemes so what we send to the decoder are the entropy encoded quantized prediction values prediction error values and here we can use any of the variable length codes we covered last week such as Huffman and arithmetic in addition the decoder has to have the predictor information or have the linear prediction coefficients available we can send these coefficients once let's say for the whole image if a static prediction is performed or update this prediction coefficients as we move through the different parts of the image we try to encode we will encounter this block diagram of the predictor of the encoder when we also talked about video encoding the prediction there will be done in the temporal direction using the motion vectors so make sure that the basic concept here is clear to you since it's a very useful and important concept here is the dpcm decoder for completeness we saw that the decoder is part of the encoder so the binary code words arrive to the decoder 
their variable length decoded, so the code words are converted to symbols, so this is the prediction error. The decoder has already reconstructed past values, they are stored in memory, and they're used by the predictor. We assume here that the predictor has already obtained the prediction coefficient by the encoder. So performs the prediction, and this is the predicted signal. So prediction plus correction here will give rise to the next reconstructed value of the signal. We derive here the equations, the so-called normal equations that allow us to solve for the prediction coefficients of a linear prediction model. So let us x of i denote the original signal. Our objective is to build a predictor f that would utilize all past values of the signal to predict the value of the signal at time or location n. And we denote this prediction by p of n. In finding such a predictor, we want the variance of the prediction error to be minimized. So x of n is the actual value, p of n the predicted, expected value squared denotes the variance. The solution to this problem in general is this conditional expectation of x of n given all past values. We want to look at a special type of predictor. We want to look at a linear predictor of order n. So the predicted value at n is simply the weighted sum of capital N past values of the signal and the weights here, are A of i, are the prediction coefficients. So in finding the predictor, we have to find the values of these prediction coefficients. And we'll find these prediction coefficients by minimizing, again, the variance of the prediction error, which takes this specific form here. We just substitute P of n by the expression of this linear predictor. The necessary conditions for obtaining a minimum are that the partials of the variance of the prediction error with respect to the prediction coefficients are equal to zero. I show here again the variance of the prediction error for this nth step linear predictor. So in finding the partial derivative of this expression here, the derivative comes inside the expectation, so the derivative of this expression squared is two times this expression times the derivative of what's inside the parenthesis. The term a i prime x of n minus i prime appears only once in this expression inside the bracket, and the derivative of this with respect to a i prime is minus, we have a minus here, x of n minus i prime. So this is what is shown here. Now if we cross multiply the terms, this expression takes this form. So we have expectation of x of n times a shifted version of x of n over here and over here. And we recognize this, that this is the expression, the definition of the autocorrelation function of the signal x. If the field is stationary, then the value of the autocorrelation is simply the distance of the signal and its shifted version. So this one here is the autocorrelation r of x, x, and the distance between this and this version is i minus i prime. So setting this expression equal to zero, we obtain the expression for the normal equations. We have capital N equations in capital N unknowns, the prediction coefficients. Here is the matrix vector form of the normal equations. This is an n by n matrix. This is n by one vector of the prediction coefficients, and clearly this is also an n by one vector. So we see that the diagonals are the same, so along the main diagonal is r of x, x, at zero, this sub-diagonal, this sub-diagonal have r of x, x, one, and so on. So this is a symmetric matrix. 
and it's a full rank matrix so I have R of A equals P and R is invertible therefore I can solve for the prediction coefficients by inverting this matrix R. Now the question is how can one find the values of R of X X at different shifts? Clearly we can use the available data and calculate these values. Alternatively we can assume that R of X X has a specific model shape I can use a model for the autocorrelation function that has certain parameters then I fit the model to the data by estimating these parameters and based on this model I can pull out the values of the autocorrelation at different shifts. We show here an example of the application of DPCM encoding to the image shown here. This is the form of the predictor so the intensity value at this location is a linear combination of the intensity values at these neighboring locations. This particular mask allows for recursive computability if a raster scan is followed. So during encoding and decoding, the current predicted value is found utilizing the reconstructed values of these three neighboring past pixels belonging to the past. In finding the values of these three prediction coefficients, we utilize the results we just presented. The normal equations need to be solved. The autocorrelation matrix of the image needs to be formed. Here is a normalized autocorrelation matrix, slightly different than the one I showed earlier. It's normalized by the variance of the image. So here is R of 0, 0, which is equal to the variance. Therefore, divided by the variance is equal to 1. The method referred as to the Yule-Walker method is used to obtain the prediction coefficients. Here are the values of the resulting prediction coefficients. So utilizing these prediction coefficients, prediction is carried out and here is how the prediction error looks like. The prediction error has dynamic range from minus 255 to 255. The original image is an 8-bit image and therefore for displaying purposes is mapped linearly into the 0 to 255 range. So the gray value of 127 represents 0, then white represents error equal to 2 plus 55 and black pixels represent error equal to minus 255. As expected the predictor is doing a nice job in the flat regions of the image where the error is zero it's a gray value however it fails it has a large error at the edges of the image this prediction error is quantized use a max Lloyd quantizer assuming a Laplacian distribution of the error two bits per pixel are used to encode the reconstruction levels of the quantizer a fixed length code of two bits is used for these reconstruction levels. If we find the entropy of the reconstruction levels, then it's equal to 1.7 bits per pixel. So in principle, if a variable length code is used, then the resulting grade could be close to 1.7 bits per pixel. So using these coefficients to carry prediction, correcting the prediction by this prediction error, we obtain this encoded image. So this encoded image at 2 bits per pixel or a compression ratio 4 to 1. We see that in this particular case it looks very similar to the original one. A means to find the quality of the encoded image is either to find the mean squared error, the signal to noise ratio or the peak signal to noise ratio where in the numerator we have the maximum value of the image 255 squared. This is the metric that is used in most cases in the compression literature to evaluate the quality of the compressed image. And by and large, a PSNR around 30 dB and higher is considered to represent a good quality encoded image. 